Hi guys, I'm Sarah, not Shara. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I bet. No worries. Yeah, so I'm working at Against Gravity, and we are based in Seattle. We are a VR game studio, and we make the game Rec Room. It's a social VR game. So before I get into that, this is a graph of the social VR apps on Steam. So does anybody want to make a guess which line represents which VR app? Anybody? I have free shirts to give away, Rec Room swag. So if you answer, Okay, I see people at the back. So do you want to just shout out what you think it is? <laughs> yup. And any other guesses what the, the rest are? Okay, that's a good answer. Yep. Yep. <laughs> they are doing slightly better than that. So, okay, so let me show you guys. Remember to come down and get a shirt from me later. So, yes, you're right, Rec Room is the blue one. And if you look at the start, Rec Room started exactly a year ago. And now we are the biggest social VR app out there. So how exactly did we get to that point? This is what I'm going to share with you about. So firstly, what is Rec Room? So a lot of people, they've seen this icon, the, our press releases, but they've never actually tried Rec Room. So Rec Room, in short, to describe it, it's kind of like Wii Spots, but for VR. So we have lots of mini games inside for people to play. And the reason why we do this is because VR is still a relatively young community. People are not used to interacting in VR, so it can get a bit awkward. And you can look at some of the other social VR apps. I won't name them. But what we do in Rec Room is that we provide games for people to interact and bond over. So people come back to Rec Room because of the community. The games are fun, but community is the reason they come back. Because people, we are the most interesting things. And that is exactly what we are giving out to them in VR. So some of the games that we have are Paintball, which is by far our most popular activity. Quest, which is kind of like a dungeon crawler. We have two versions of it. This is called um, The Rise of Jumbotron, which is quite difficult to play, I'll admit. The, the bad guys shoot lasers at you, which is really fast. We also have 3D charades. So imagine charades, but you have a 3D gun. You can draw in 3D and guess the words. We have disc golf, which is sort of like a mix between frisbee and golf. And this is a real sport in real world. I didn't know that. I thought it was a VR-only sport, but apparently not. And dodgeball and a lot of other activities. Too many to fit here. So, for our company, Against Gravity, we have three main values which we follow a lot when we are, um, which helps us to make our decisions and prioritize what we want to do next. So, if you look at the first one, it's ready, fire, aim. So, we fire first before we aim. And what exactly does that mean? This means that going fast is a lot more valuable than polish. Because at this state of the VR industry, people value experiments. Nobody really knows what's right and what's wrong. And even if you think what is right now, it might be proven wrong in the future. For example, like common VR knowledge says, don't accelerate the user. But if you look at games like Ego Flight, they have actually done it really successfully. And I myself suffer from VR sickness, but when I play Ego Flight, I'm fine, surprisingly. So for this, we ship and iterate constantly. And so here are a few examples. So for this, this is the handshake gesture in VR, um, in Rec Room. So how we came up with this was because we were thinking like, I want to make friends with people. I want to add them to my friends list. But I don't really want to have to dig through a menu because in VR, it doesn't feel good to have like so much 2D UI. It's as if it's the real world. You want to have like 3D gestures, 3D actions. So what we did was, hey, why don't we try a handshake? We tried it up. We hacked together a prototype. This was done like I think in an afternoon. And it worked amazingly. Everybody liked it, so we decided to push it. And the community also really liked it. And the next one is a keyboard. So we actually have a virtual keyboard. And I'll wait for it to come up. Yeah, and you see how you type on it? You use your fingers. So when we were first experimenting with this, um, there was already some research, some of the apps out there, which did something similar, but they had sort of like a drumstick method. So you're holding a drumstick in your hands, and you're like typing on a keyboard like this which was kind of strange, but because people said it worked, so that was the first thing we tried. But instead of a drumstick, we had like 
mini Trump hands. So that was really funny. And we realized like it did work, but it could have been better. And one of our designers was like, hey, why don't we try like using hands instead? And since in Rec Room, like your hands are the block hands like this, somebody said, why don't we make it a finger, a pointer? And then we tried that and it actually feels really good. So I've tried the drumstick method and personally, I don't like it. This one feels so much better. And I'm sure most people can remember like when you first learn how to type, a lot of people did this, right? Please say I'm not the only one. Okay, good to know. Your friend would like this way of typing then. Yeah, so this is one example of just trying stuff out, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And we are more interested in just trying new stuff, seeing what works, and pushing it out to people. Because the best feedback you can get is from the community. And the next value is, when in doubt, build it. So this means we are biased towards action. So this is sort of similar to the previous point, um, but also like if you're not sure of anything, you want to prototype it as fast as you can and test it out in VR because as I'm sure like some of you know, what you see on a 2D screen on your monitor feels very different in VR. That's a, lot, um, that's a mistake which a lot of beginners make. They don't realize how different it is. So one example is this. Let me, can you guys see this? So our art director, Sorry, feedback. Our art director, where's the other mic? So our art director um, saw this GIF on Reddit about a year ago, or less than a year ago, and he was like, this is super cute. Can you imagine if we have this kind of expressions on our Red Room avatars? And at first, people were like, oh, are you sure? It's not gonna look good, it's gonna be weird, you cannot control it, but why not just try it out? So we had to get a prototype. This is how the prototype looks like. And it was actually pretty cute. So we added it to our avatars. And now, all Rec Room avatars have this. So this has not just like gotten into Rec Room. It has become like a distinct feature of Rec Room. So yeah, our avatars, like, they always have weird expressions all the time. Usually smiley faces. Because what you see on people's faces um, it, you might not know, but it affects you subconsciously and it affects your behavior. This is one of the reasons why Rec Room, in general, we have pretty good community behavior for a multiplayer game. What? Yep, and... Well, it's not for kids, but we have a lot of interest from the younger people. Okay, and the last one is, it's a small world. So what this means is, what goes around comes around. We respect our customers. We don't do anything to exploit them because we value all of them. And this can be seen like how we treat, how we interact with our community. Um, we are very active on Reddit, on Discord, on the Steam forums, and our community respects that. They enjoy interacting with us, and you can see the way they interact with us shows like how much they value this. So for example, recently, I think last month, we released a new paintball map called Spillway. And then, like within the next few days, I think, in fact, within the next few hours, we had so many comments thanking us about it. And if you look at some of these comments, like, people are like, please add a donate option. I want to give you guys money. How often do you get a product which people say that for? By the way, Rec Room is free. It's on Steam and Oculus Home. So we are not monetizing it right now, but people are asking us, can we donate? We love the game so much. We want to support it. And it's not just about how good the game is, it's because of the community. That is what brings people back again and again. So, what does the future of the VR industry look like? Anybody want to make a guess? <laughs> you guys just want more shirts, right? Okay, never mind. So, um, we believe that it's going to be a race to the middle in terms of headsets. So right now you can see like the high-end ones like Vive and Oculus Rift, and then the lower-end ones like Daydream and Samsung Gear VR. So what we believe will be the future, the one which will go into the mass market, is something like this. The um, six DOF, six degrees of freedom for your head and your hands, which means you can move around, you can rotate, everything is tracked properly. There will be inside-out tracking, so you won't need external sensors. The price range will be around 200 to 300, and there'll be no wires, which are the most annoying thing right now. So when will this happen? 
within the next few years, we believe, and if you look at this graph, oh, okay, you guys are supposed to guess again what the graph means and don't say rec room because this has nothing to do with rec room. Anybody want to guess? Smartphones? No, not smartphones. Not price? VR, AR, yes. So, that is AR, that is VR. We believe AR is going to be the future. VR is going to be popular, but it nowhere near as popular as AR. So why are we focusing on VR right now? Because the lessons you learn in VR, a lot of them can be translated to AR. We want to get a foothold in the VR market first because it's going to mature way before the AR market. So once we have that advantage, when the AR boom comes, Red Room hopefully will be positioned at the best part to take advantage of it. And where we are right now is somewhere over here. So we haven't actually hit the part where VR goes crazy. The inflection point, what we predict, will be sometime at the end of next year or after that. But before that, not so much. And if you look at it, like the previous slide I was saying, um, the VR headsets, um, this kind of VR headsets with all these features, well, not features, with all these points. If you look at um, the VR headsets which Google, Microsoft are announcing now, they're getting closer and closer to it. Microsoft's headset is, I think it's $400, which includes their two hand controllers, and it's inside out tracking. So the same is for Google's one. Yep, so if you look at this, we are getting closer and closer to it, which is why, oops, next Christmas, something big will happen. But if it doesn't happen, then it'll be the Christmas after that. Don't quote me on this. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good time to buy VR headsets during the Christmas season. And finally, we really hope that Red Room will be positioned to take advantage of that. We have a lot of learnings from VR, and we really want to translate that into AR because we believe that's the future. And yeah, this is just a painting one of our concept artists did. It's in VR in the lounge in Red Room. And it was so nice, we decided, to, we decided to make a real one and put it in our office as well. So this is there as well, in VR and in real life. And yeah, that's it. So do I have any questions? You get free shirts. Okay, yeah, hi. So, because I was wondering actually, uh, how, you, how do you all handle about the personal space issue? Because I actually saw one video on YouTube about something like uh, Handybot or something like that. Yep, that was yeah. last December. So, uh, yeah, I saw that video and it was like, I feel like, oh, if I'm that guy, uh, it's going to be like super, super awkward. Because like, um, the guy, he was like, uh, being not so nice to uh, the, his fellow players. So the thing about this guy is that he didn't really know how to control the game that well. Yep. And then uh, because his character is fixed in place, the other characters actually started moving towards him and like touching him and like, <laughs> yeah, he couldn't do anything about it. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> So yes, not so nice is a very nice way to put it. We consider that social harassment. And we take that really, really seriously. So that happened in December last year, the, I think towards the end of December. And since then, we have implemented a lot more features to combat social harassment. And I can assure you as a female, I get a lot of that when I step into VR. So one, one thing which we have implemented is an ignore bubble. So by default, it's on, I think, set at small. So if somebody approaches me, they get ghosted out, they turn invisible. So that means that if I want to try, if somebody wants to try and harass me, they want to come towards me, if they put their hands towards me, their hands ghost out, I don't see it. They still see it, but I don't see it, so I'm not really affected by oh, it. Okay. And so you can change the size of that bubble, you can turn it off if like, I don't know, you're close friends with that person and you don't want to ignore a bubble, but by default it's set at small, you can set it to medium, you can set it to large. And then you can also ignore people. So we have um, implemented this thing called the stop gesture. If somebody is being annoying to me, I can just hold up my hand at them, and they disappear. Oh. They get ghosted. <laughs> well, OK, they don't <laughs> disappear. <laughs> they disappear from my side. Oh, okay. But other people can still see them. So I don't see them. And the best part is I don't hear them as well. 
So if they want to continue spotting rubbish, I don't care because I cannot see them. So that are just some of the things that we have done and we have also streamlined our reporting because we really take this seriously. And each time something like this happens, we reach out to the user and we ask, how can we help you? Yep, so I hope that answers your question. Or you can get a shirt too, but you need to come forward later. Yeah, hi Sarah, thanks for your time. I'm um, just curious, because you mentioned how you guys are gonna tr transition to AR, so I'm just uh, wondering, you know, what's um, do you have any uh, any vision for for AR? And like, what do you plan, do you plan to stay in gaming or branch out? Or uh, in like right now, what lessons do you think uh, from working in VR will be translatable to AR? So a lot of the design principles in VR can be moved to AR. And fun fact about our company: about half, actually, I think more than half now of our company came from the Microsoft Hololens team. So we really do believe AR is going to be big. It's just that right now, the market is a bit too small. It's too immature for AR. So we believe VR is going to mature first. That's why we're doing it now. And what we hope Red Room will be in the future is not just going to be games, but um, a place for people to meet up, which we are starting to see. So there is a lounge in Red Room, which we have seen people um, go there and carry out meetings there because we have a whiteboard in VR which is the coolest thing ever because you can take a virtual marker, draw on a virtual whiteboard and everything works. So that's pretty cool. And not just that, like community driven events, we want Red Room, and not just Red Room, whatever we do in the future, we want it to be a place where people can meet up. We want it to be the default meeting place. So like for example, if I have a friend or if I'm in America and I want to meet up with like say my family, I can say, hey, meet me in Red Room. And then we can just go to our own private room, we can have a chat, we can play games together, stuff like that. So we wanted to be the default meeting place. Sort of like how Facebook now is a bit like the default social media channel. So we are hoping that Red Room will be something like that in the future. Hello, thank you for sharing. Could you share more about the addressable market in, uh, for like, these type of apps and how is it like, compared between Asia and the rest of the world? So for the addressable market, right now it's limited by the number of headsets. Uh, we are only available on Vive and Oculus Rift at this moment. We have plans to expand of course, but not right now. So if you look at the total number of headsets um, which can play Rec Room, oh, and you need controllers, hand controllers, for Red Room. So in terms of the Oculus Rift market, only those people with touch. So right now, there are only about half a million headsets which, can, which Red Room can run on. So it's still pretty small and we are limited by that. But it's growing fast and we are working with a lot of the companies which are producing the VR headsets like Microsoft in order to help push our game to their headsets when it comes out. Does that sort of answer the question? Oh yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that part. So the interesting thing about Asia and America and Europe, in fact, is that Asia seems to be going the route of the VR arcade. In America, it seems like more people are interested in like um, games and their own personal headset. But in Asia, maybe because of like, I don't know, lack of space, but th that's true for Singapore. Um, people seem to be going the, a uh, the arcade route. And it's pretty interesting to watch because in America, most people think arcades, it's not going to be successful. But in Asia, you see them popping up everywhere. Welcome. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, as a company for Against Gravity, what are some of the challenges or I guess thought processes you guys have gone through uh, relating to when to start to monetize and to keep doing what you guys uh, do for free? That's a really good that's a really good question, which a lot of people have been asking us. So we don't have any plans to monetize this year, but definitely in future, which I cannot talk about now, unfortunately. So we want to keep the game free to play all the time because we believe that such a platform shouldn't be monetized. Oh, well, it should be monetized, but not, there shouldn't be like a barrier to entry. So something like Facebook, we might not go the ads route. It's still a bit foggy right now, but definitely monetization in the future. And the thing is, once you have all the market share, it's going to be much easier. I would say we have enough players that financially we are not in any trouble. We have a significant amount of money. <laughs> yep. When you're the biggest social VR app, money tends to not be a problem. Kind of. 
Okay, yeah, if you're more, if you're interested in that, I can talk to you more about it offline. Okay, maybe you take uh, one last question. Uh. Hi, Sarah. Uh, I think you should agree as a studio, um, we are kind of at mercy of the platform. So be it Oculus, be it uh, HTC or Microsoft. Uh, as uh, some of you are fortunate enough to be able to work on multiple platforms, including Windows Mixed Reality, uh, I'd just like to get your sensing on how things might change uh, uh, in maybe come Christmas or maybe in the next year. Do you foresee uh, with the changes in, uh, in with Oculus and Vive and also the Windows Mixed Reality Touch controllers, uh, would you see any changes in the market or possibly uh, one platform overtaking another? So right now, um, the HTC Vive is the most popular headset, even though like, I kind of think Oculus is better. That's not an endorsement from me. But yeah, so if you look at the VR headsets that, that are coming out, there are so many different types. Some of them are slightly better, and each of them has their own pros and cons. So in terms of that, we just want to target as many people as we can and move to as, um, be available on as many platforms as we can. In terms of which platform we think will win out, right now we are not really sure. And one really nice thing about Red Room and being the most popular social VR app again is that people want you on their platform. It's not a, hey, can I be on your platform? Can you help me with this? It's more like companies come and, hey, we really want you to be on our platform. We believe that your game will help us drive sales up. So can you help us? So it's just an advantage which comes with being popular, so I guess. That sounded a bit wrong, but you get what I mean. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Sarah, for the uh, great talk.